Hi guys, welcome back to the channel here at Totally Magic. Glad you can join us for a festive video. Well, yeah, it is kind of festive because I thought we'd do a routine or two that you can show friends, family and work colleagues because at this time of year, as we lead up to the festive season, you know what it's like, people pop in to wish you a happy holiday and it's an ideal opportunity for you to perform some magic on them. So that's what we're gonna to do today with a deck of cards. We got 52 regular cards here. I'll even give them a shuffle or two just to prove that there's no cheating. Now I'm gonna get you to choose a card and it can be any card you like, any card that you wish to choose. But I don't want to be accused of handing you a card. In other words, I don't want to be doing what most magicians do, force a card onto you. I want you to have a total free choice of any card. 52 cards, I'm going to do it hands free. There's the spread. I'd like you just to move your finger back and forth and then just point to any part of the pack. So here is where you're pointing. Now, keep your finger there. Let me just slip these apart because we're going to cut the pack at this point. There is the card that you stopped on, not me. I'm going to push that forward, okay? Get rid of these. I want you to peek at that card, but do not let me see it. Now, the spectator will remember their card. Remember your card. Now what I'd like you to do is take your card, but keep it face down. Don't let me see the face and drop it on top of the pack. Perfect. I'm going to cut the pack to lose that and we can even give it a quick shuffle as well. Now, you might think I know what your card is. I know where it is. I don't, but some people believe I do. I want you to cut the pack. And I promise I will not shuffle, mix, or touch the cards again. So please cut the cards and complete the cut. I think you'll agree that neither me or yourself could know where your card is or any card in this pack. I'm gonna push those to one side. You have a free choice of a card. I want you to have a free choice of any number. There's 52 cards in the pack. I want you now to give me any number between 1 and 52. 13, unusual number because it's often considered unlucky, but are you happy with that number? 13, unlucky for some, let's see if it's lucky for you. I'm gonna count 13 cards here on the table. In fact, let's just put them over here away from the pack. There's two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, what was thirteen, wasn't it? It wasn't twelve, no, twelve, thirteen. Remember that you had a choice of any of the cards here in the pack. What was your card? The six of hearts. The card in the 13th position that you cut is the Six of Hearts, a free choice. Pretty good, huh? Now, what I'd like to do, we'll mix up the cards. And what I'd like you to do is, we're not gonna use the whole pack. Can you reach over and cut off about a third of the pack? Perfect, we don't need these ones. Now, a random array of cards. I'm going to deal out two packets of cards. Okay, we'll spread these. In fact, we'll even give the cards a quick shuffle just in case. We'll spread the cards. Can you slide out any card from here and can you slide out any card from this one okay. are you happy with that yep so out of all of these cards you've made two choices 
In a moment, I'm going to ask you to do it. And as soon as I say those words, without thinking, just push one of those cards towards me. Are you ready? Do it. Are you happy with that? You see, oh, you've got rid of the Joker from the pack. You left with one card. Despite the shuffling, you cutting, dealing, and choosing two random cards from 52, you have blended up with one card. Have a look at it. And look at that. That must be your lucky card, the six of hearts. A perfect trick. Now, what I'd like to show you next involves money. And I know that that's always of interest to everybody when you talk about cash money. Have you ever noticed that magicians always want to be that big stage magician that has the big cabinet on it and he puts a beautiful lady in it and he takes a sword and pushes it through the lady and she's unharmed. Now, for us magicians, I don't have a big cabinet. I don't have a beautiful woman to put in the cabinet. However, what I do have is a small big illusion coming up using something that's quite old. Now I know most of you younger people watching this won't recognize this. It's called a coin holder. And back in the day, uh, when we used to drive our cars, we used to keep coins in here that we used to use for parking meters. And we could keep some coins. In fact, I've got some coins here. Okay. Oh, I've got a tissue as well. Don't worry, it is clean. Okay, let's just wipe that off. But in here, we would put coins. And then when we pulled up at a parking meter, we always had the coins available. We could see how many we had because there's holes through this coin case. And the thing about this is that you don't use these or see them anymore because we pay for everything nowadays by our smartphone, Apple Pay, PayPal, credit card. So they're kind of redundant, but this is mine from years ago. And I thought I'd show you my big, small illusion. I'm gonna take some coins and pop them in here. Now you'll see they're such a tight fit there's no way that they can move any, anyhow. They can't drop through the holes, but there they are. Now, I'm gonna show you the magic illusion where a sword is pushed right through the lady. Well, I don't have a lady, but I do have some coins. A sword, can I borrow that from you? Thank you. Here is my sword. Well, it's a pencil, but you get the idea. I'm gonna take, in fact, just like all magicians, they always put someone in a cabinet and draw a curtain around. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, my clean tissue, it is a clean tissue, and I'm gonna lay this over the cabinet or over the ladies in here, and I'm gonna take my sword and push it right through the first coin. I know it's hard to believe, but let me show you that again from the side. As I push through the hole, zoom, it goes right the way through and out the other side. Finally, watch the final coin as it comes through. Bum. There it is all the way through. Now that is what you call a grand illusion in a small scale. Now the thing with this, let me just remove the tissue, you can see the holes penetrating all the way through my clean tissue. There inside are all three coins. You can examine the coins. You can also examine my coin case. I leave that for you to look at. Enjoy. I hope you enjoyed that small routine of three tricks. Now, let me explain the thinking behind this whole routine. One, they're very simple, basic tricks, but they have a huge impact on the lay person. So if you have got people coming round this festive season, certainly friends and family, 
then it's a great opportunity for you to do a nice little quick routine. I think it's a kind of five, 10 minute routine. Three great tricks that are not expensive. First of all, the trick we begin with was a classic among magicians called the any card at any number. Now the method that I've used, and trust me guys, if you're new to magic, you'll begin to realize that there are thousands of variations of any card at any number, often referred to as the ACAM. A lot of people dismiss the method I've used here because they say it's too simple, but the impact it has on the layperson is absolutely fantastic. In fact, just as good as any professional version you may have seen performed. We're using a deck of cards here. See how mixed up they are? Yeah, of course you didn't. I fooled you. This deck is one of the greatest inventions in my eyes of all time in magic. It's one of the first card decks I ever bought and it's one that I still use even today. It's known as the Svengali deck, of course. All of you out there are saying, oh, of course it was. The Svengali, most people dismiss it because they've seen it in a toy shop for just a couple of pounds, and then the person that demonstrates it always does it the same. They kind of flick cards to show, here I've got a deck full of ordinary cards, they turn it around and flick it and then say they're all the same cards. Now the thing with this is that I've never done that, I hate that move, but it's such a versatile deck. Let's get into the trick itself and the handling. It's the handling that makes the trick because you want to be very relaxed and loose about the cards. Now, did you notice, by the way, for those of you that haven't managed to buy one of these decks yet, uh, this deck cost me two pounds here in the UK from eBay. Now, I bought this because I wanted you to just try a cheap deck of cards. Now, I have bought cheap decks in the in the previous years and they've been rubbish. They are cheap, cardboard, thin, they didn't have any uh, coating so they stuck together, they were absolutely awful. Guys, this deck here has got to be one of my favourite decks that I've bought, Svengali. For two pounds off of eBay, this is what I bought. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put a link in the description below for the simple reason, as you know, on eBay, things come and go. So anyone watching this video in a couple of months, it, the link may not work. But if you search out Svengali, this is what you're looking for. It's in this type of box. It's bridge size. And trust me, I'm not being paid. It's, it's, it's not a commercial. I don't know the company. They're obviously made in China. Um, and I'm not being sponsored or anything whatsoever. I just think it's worth me mentioning that these are quality cards. Trust me guys, I've bought bicycle Svengali's off of eBay and they've been awful. Why? The way that this pack works is that all of the 26 identical false cards are cut short, only by a fraction. Now the problem that most packs have is that the cut is done awful and they don't round off the edges. Look at this one. Look how superbly cut that is. Rounded perfectly. When they're together you can't even tell. The second thing I like about these cards is the handling. The cards are just the right thickness, just like bicycle, and they do have a plastic coating, but the coating is really good. I think these are fantastic. They spread well, they handle well, and as for the Svengali effect, it works perfect. Now, onto the routine, handling it freely. First of all, when you get the pack, with a Svengali, you can do a riffle shuffle, okay? Because as you flip these, they fall in pairs. So as you do this, you're not actually 
messing up the order. They're still in this pairs of cards. Yeah. So that's good. If you want to do an overhand shuffle, I like to do it faces towards the audience. And all you've got to do, let me show this camera, I just bend it slightly. Don't over exaggerate it. You just need to do a slight bend in the cards. Because when you do that, watch what happens. Only the regular cards are shown and you do not disturb the order of the stack of cards. Okay, so you can do this, but the way the cards are made, it works really well. So I've shuffled the cards. The real kicker here is when you spread the cards. Oh, by the way, you notice in the routine, I did turn them face up and just casually show them. Remember, in a live situation, your family and friends aren't going to be studying every card as it goes past. But don't linger like that. Just do it casually. Sometimes I'll even just spread the cards like that. You just don't spot that 26 of the cards are duplicates. So you can get away, look, we've got a deck of cards here. I'm gonna get you to choose one. You spread the cards like this. Now, this is the thing where the trick can go in two directions. Let me explain. I want this to be as free as possible. So I say to them, lower your finger onto any point in the deck. Now, say if they went there, you say, hold it there. Let me just split there. Now notice that I'm not saying that this is going to be their card at this point. What I'm going to do is to time it, I'm going to say, let's cut the pack here. Now can you see, I time it, so as I say, we're going to cut the pack here. I see this card. Now because this is an ordinary card, an indifferent card, I know that this is gonna be the Six of Hearts, the fourth card. That's how I play that. But what happens if you spread the cards like this? And again, I say, we're gonna cut the cards at your chosen card, an absolute free choice. Can you see how I change the wording, depending what's turned up? It works both ways, because then you can say, that is your card there. It doesn't matter if they see this card here, okay? Either way will work. So let's say that it, it goes the same way that it did in the routine that I presented. You ask them to slide that card, you gather up these cards, you can turn these over, face up, and you can drop these on top. Look how many times the audience are getting a glimpse of regular cards. Subconsciously, they're taking that in. Everything looks clean. They look at their card. What I do here is that I pretend to guide them and say, what I'd like you to do now is to take your card, but keep it face down so I can't see it. And just tilt this up so they, again, they glimpse another regular card. You say, uh, I don't want to see your card, just drop it like that on top of the pack. They do that, you then cut the pack, which will cut in the right place. You can then proceed to do a shuffle, an overhand shuffle. As you say to them, some people believe that magicians cheat when they shuffle and put cards in certain positions. Now what you get them to do is for them to cut. Now this is again another strong point because you're not gonna alter the order from this point on. They cut the pack, complete the cut. There's no way that you could know where their card is or what it is. Now, this is finally where it can go in two ways. You're gonna ask for a number, one to 52. They really do have a free choice. Try and keep it a lower number because if someone said 51, you'll be here all day counting cards and it gets boring. So, um, they give a number. Now, if they give an odd number, all of your six of heart duplicates are in an odd position. So if they say 11, that's it, you count down to the 11th card. If they give an even number, then what I do is I say, 
let's say if they said um, eight. Eight, are you happy with eight? Give them a chance to uh, change it because you may get an odd number. But say if they said eight, you say, we're going to eliminate eight cards. Can you see that I'm using the word eliminate? Because I know that the ninth card will be their card. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We shall get rid of these cards. You didn't want any of these. Now you can show the one you just dealt. Here is the card that we've arrived at. And as you can see, it's gonna be their card and it's a great little trick. Now, when you do this and they've got their card, the, the cards you've just dealt off just drop on top. That keeps the order there. You can take this card back and just cut the cards and then you go on to the second routine because I like to do a couple of tricks with this because otherwise it screams that if you just bring out a deck of cards and do one trick and put them away people think maybe there's something with the deck but if I go on and appear to be quite comfortable in doing another trick they kind of assume which they do already that these are regular cards now what you can do is you can give them a quick shuffle or cut, it makes no difference, they're still in order. You ask a spectator to cut about a third of the cards. And the reason I do that is because if they take too many, then we'll be here all day. They cut the cards. You can just move these cards to one side, and again I turn them face up. You deal out the cards alternating. Now what you're actually doing here, as if you couldn't guess, is that you're separating all the cards into all of the sixes, our false cards, and, and ordinary cards. You can shuffle these, and it doesn't matter if they flash, if you flash these, okay, you're gonna say, I'm gonna get you to choose one of these. I'm gonna get you to choose two cards. Spread them. Now this is a very simple trick, but still effective. Ask them to slide out any card. Gather these up. These are all sixes, so you know that's a six of hearts there. Slide out any one of these, gather these, and as, as you gather these, scoop up the other pack, flip them over, and say you could have had any of these. Drop these on top of the pack. We now know that that's the card we're gonna force on. We're gonna use a magician's choice. Now you can do this any way. You can say, what I'd like you to do is just to hand me one of those cards. Or as I said, when I click my fingers, uh, push any one of those cards to one side or to me. You play it how you think it's best. So if they push this one to me, which I know is a six of hearts, I say, okay, you've now given me your card Let's get rid of this. And I just straight away turn this over and drop it on top. So you could have had any card. It is the six of hearts. So that's one way of playing it. Obviously, if they push this one to me or hand this one to me, then I say, okay, you don't want this one. And we get rid of that. You're left with this. It's a great little ending. And the good thing about this is that as you pick the cards up, you can go through a few of the cards because they are the top ones are just regular cards. So that the audience can't grab the pack to examine, you move straight on into your next routine. Now, pick a routine that doesn't use cards. Either a dice trick, a coin trick, a silk hanky trick, whatever trick it is, just as long as it doesn't use this. Maybe it uses your mobile phone. You put these cards away so no one can grab them and you then pull out your phone and do a trick. I use this one, and again, for people just getting into magic, you might already have one of these, okay? Uh, it's a trick that is based on a Tenyo effect from many, many years ago. It was one of my favorite tricks from Tenyo. It was called Soft Coins. But nowadays, you can pick these up. I think I paid a pound for this from one of our budget stores. Okay, uh, a pound, a dollar store, something like that. But if you search eBay for these uh, coin holder tricks, they cost one or two pounds. They're as cheap as anything. You can get them in toy shops, joke shops, anywhere. And they appear in probably every children's magic set. 
But can you see with the routine, it becomes quite an impressive trick. It's not just a little toy. So I use the premise of it's a coin holder from years ago when we used parking meters, we used to have to fumble for our change, but this holds the coins. Now I'm not gonna go through the full routine because it's pretty obvious if you've got one of these, but anyone that's seen this, when the coins go in, watch. The center part slides. Now I know some people will start going, oh, you're revealing the secret. Trust me, every child under five has got one of these and if anyone can pick them up for a pound, it's not a big deal. And the only people watching this video at this point are gonna be people into magic, okay? So don't worry about your, your cousins are gonna see this. They're not gonna sit through one of these videos and they get bored. So there it is there, the coins slide. And the routine was, is if you watch it back, now you know that, is that I lay the tissue over this, close it, and then I tilt it. Let me show you what's happened. At the bottom, it slid out. And then I hold this bit down here as it slides out. I can then just hide that and hold it in position. So now the pencil can go through all three of those. If you've got three pencils, put all three through, okay? Then when you've finished, I tilt this down as I pull this out. So as I pull it forward, it slides. This is what happens. There it is there. As I pull the tissue forward, it tilts there. And you pull this out, you open this up, you tip the coins out. Now the great thing about this, that you can hand this out to be examined because the hinge, there's a little bit that sticks out, which the camera's not gonna see, but there's a little kind of uh, hinge pin that sticks out here, that if I push that, it locks the tray. The tray doesn't move. So you can then hand it out for examination and people can look at that, the coins, everything is clean. It's a great effect. Come up with a different storyline, maybe some sort of festive one. So that is the trick. Uh, hopefully you've uh, picked up a few ideas. And as I said, do not write off the Svengali deck. It's a great deck of cards and professionals still use it. Enjoy your festive season and enjoy the magic on your friends. Till next time, practice and as always, enjoy.